Congratulations. You wanted to start jujitsu. Well, you're trading one addiction for another. <laughs> Yes, this is true. Uh, if you guys uh, haven't started your first class already, or if you're thinking about starting one, in this video we're going to go over at least some three things to talk about uh, when you are thinking about starting this sport. And the first one, and we're going to dive right into it, so hold on, get your popcorn and candies ready. But uh, yeah, the first thing that you're going to think about is what gym are you going to attend to? And that might not be your first thought. Your first thought might be fear. Should I do this? Well, let me tell you, as all these pictures show, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not probably millions of people that do this sport one way or the other, if that's wrestling, judo, or jujitsu. Now, the first thing is going to be the fear of rolling with someone or just walking in the door to a gym. Now, let me tell you guys, as a beginner and as I was in the beginning, as it is a beginner, uh, it was intimidating. Um, I started in 2009 in Fresno, California at Dethrone Base Camp under, well, it's technically AKA at the moment, but you know, gyms change. So do owners. But yeah, if you guys remember Josh Koscheck, yeah, he was my instructor. And then it moved down to John Salter, Tiago Rocha, holy smokes. Um, Man, we got Umberto Borges, uh, we got uh, Bernardo Fiario, I mean, the list goes on and on, I got Brian Gonzalez, so many under the sun, and uh, Jeff Messina, Alex Cerconi, I have trained with some of the best of the best, and surprisingly, my ears aren't that messed up. But let's get back to the video. When we are thinking about starting jiu-jitsu, or if you're starting to th think about doing jiu-jitsu, um, yeah, it's going to be really intimidating walking through those doors and kind of going in blind. And that was my first thought of, you know, what am I doing, where am I starting, and how do I do this? Now, for you guys, the best way to start, if you haven't already or enjoy like UFC, if you guys like fighting or some sort of grappling, um, you know, that's kind of the where you thought about doing this or unless you've had some sort of traumatic experience that you want to learn self-defense. Um, you know, I hope everything worked out um, in your favor. But uh, if not, yes, this is a great way for you guys to learn self-defense and to bring up your confidence and, of course, to get in shape. But that's the last thing that we're going to think about. Uh, the first thing to think about is, yes, your school. And that's where we're going to start. So, um, you know, look around in your area. And my biggest recommendation is don't go to a McDojo. Now, what do I say by McDojo? Um, I'm going to use this maybe a little as an example of a McDojo. This is Autos with, um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, there's probably 12 or 13 or 14 black belts there. Um, and now Autos... Not the bad, not the worst, but it is expensive. I remember going there in San Diego, and it is very expensive just to drop in. Um, but a McDojo would be probably like a Gracie Baja, um, uh, some sort of affiliate style jujitsu club, if you will. But uh, my, you know, like here's one is a good, is a good example, which I've been to. Now Gracie Baja is a great great gym. They have high quality mats. That's another thing to look out for is the quality of the gym. So um, if you're looking around your area, just a good idea. Um, find one that has maybe, I don't know, 50 to 100 members. Um, and just on any given day, you could have maybe 10 or maybe 30 people tops during class. Now, once you start getting the big gyms, uh, so, you know, like one that I went to for a few years, you know, they had uh, maybe 500 members, maybe a thousand with the kids included. And there were some points, man, there weren't, there wasn't a lot of mat space, you know, there wasn't a lot of mat space, but you got a lot of talent. So those are things that you have to think about. And obviously we're not going to go down the road of like experience and stuff like that for, um, people, but you, you definitely want to get the vibe of the energy. So I do recommend going to the gym beforehand. I don't really want to show up before class, you know, and then just hop into it, man, take a Wednesday lunch or, uh, you know, take a Friday lunch or Friday afternoon or Friday evening and go down and check out 
the vibe. You know, the vibe's cool. Everybody's having a good time and just messing around. That's the place to be. Now, if you've got a drill instructor in there and they're going, going, go, but if that's your style, I would definitely recommend. Um, if it's not your style, uh, you go to a 10th planet. Uh, and that's something that you have to remember too. There are certain, like there's check mat, there's tech, the 10th planet, there's piranha, there's, uh, uh, oh my gosh, uh, there's Gracie Baja, there's Henzo Gracie, there's just a lot out there. And, uh, you know, maybe go with the vibe that you like. So there, there's different places around that's going to offer uh, different levels of technique and adversity. So uh, my for me, my level is right there when it comes to like 10th Planet and Natos. I like to chill, but I like to be competitive. It's, you know, you, you'll, you'll go around and uh, find the vibe that you like. And price is a good point as well. Uh, let's get into the price. I think a reasonable membership is going to cost you between 100 to 150 and I know we're kind of getting in with the inflation and stuff, but I would pay no more than 150 and that's for a top tier. It has to have extras. I don't know, but, um, yeah, don't, you do not overpay. And I think it's good to actually converse with some of the other members of what they pay. Cause I don't want something disclosed where someone's paying a different fee and um, and I'm going to be paying a different fee. I, I don't like that. I like a structured system. Give me everybody's the same. Very good. Um, so I think that's important to find not only a proper place, but a proper price. We don't want to be had for, you know, there's a lot of fake black belts out there. A lot of fake black belts. And that's another reason, again, to go have a uh, maybe a lunch or a dinner, uh, you know, go go out there. And check it out and find the vibe and also see if you connect with the instructor you know you don't know if maybe the instructor's just a, you know he's not your vibe and i've had a few of those where i'm just i don't i don't want to say i don't get along i just don't agree with you know what they're teaching and uh, not that they're wrong but just you know we got a vibe it's like dating right you got to have a good vibe when you're um rolling with an instructor that's going to tell you what to do um, second, our wardrobe, right? What is a good gi to wear? Now, my favorite by far is Fuji. Fuji is one of my favorite, and I think they have a great price point. So a good example right here, we've got one that's like $129. we have got one that's 100 bucks. very basic. And then if you want to get to like some of the fancy ones down here, by all means, I am a big fan of some flair. Don't get me wrong. And as I look at this one, it's only $99. Why I have not bought it? Uh, yeah. And that's going to lead me into the addiction part. <laughs> uh, but let's finish off. Now, we've got, uh, I think there's Fuji, there's Piranha. Um, there's just a multitude of uh, geese out there. Um, you know, there's probably some that I haven't even heard of. I mean, shoot, I think even Adidas makes <laughs> makes their own gi. But um, uh, I think I think Fuji is is probably one of my favorites. So uh, you know, for recommendation, I would go check them out. And again, they sell them on Amazon. They've got a great price, and they're true to size. So for ex instance, um, I'm six two. No, six two. I'm six foot. Um, I'm about one ninety five. And I wear an A2. The sleeves run a little long, and that's another thing. They offer long or short cut pants and shirts, which are very rare to find. Um, there are some that you can adjust. It's going to be a little more, but to tailor to that size, like if you're a little bigger guy with shorter legs or if you're a taller guy that's a little skinnier, you know, you can get an A2 long, and uh, that'll that'll get you, get you by. And uh, that one gi, if you're training three times a week, We'll do you fine. Now, well, let's see two or three times a week because you're going to be running that sucker every day pretty much. Now, I think a good collection is going to be three in total. Now, when I talk about switching addictions, yes, this is uh, also an addiction within the sport is buying geese. I know a lot of people that have 50, 100 geese. Not really, but maybe like 10 to 15. I think that's a little excessive. Uh, if you are training at least three times a week, I would say at least three to five, probably around three, just a white, blue, and a black. You know, it, it, it's just simple. Um, a lot of 
here's one thing to think about. There's, I think Gracie Baja does some things like that where, you know, you're not supposed to wear blue until you're a blue belt or something like that. I try to stick away from that kind of stuff. I don't really think a gi color is going to represent like who I am or who I affiliate with. It's more about the belt. Uh, and we'll cover that here in a second, but, um, yeah, you know, get yourself at least three geese, I think, just in the beginning. Um, you know, don't spend more than 150 bucks. You know, if you're, you know, loaded with cash and you want to get all the bougie stuff, uh, you're more than welcome to. But just like I said, recommendation. Um, find something that works and, yeah, uh, go with it. Now, last thing I do want to cover when you are starting it, obviously, is going to be your nervous system and how, how you feel going into the gym. Now... Just remember, and I, I really want to reiterate this when I say this. When I first started, was it intimidating? A little bit. I had a weird mindset when I when I go into that. Is that David Scroggins, by the way? I need to see that. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> or David Goggins, uh, excuse me. But when you go in there, there are going to be people that are rolling around very intensely and it's going to feel intimidating. And that's normal. Now, I want you to also think about that these people are just like you. They have a job, unless they're training jiu-jitsu full-time. <laughs> but no, they have a job. They have bills to pay. They have girlfriends, relationship problems, or good things. Um, you know, They have family members. They have a car. They have payments. They, you know, they have to pay taxes to the government. <laughs> Essentially, what I'm saying is we're all the same. Okay, so no one's better than someone else in that fact where, oh, this guy's going to beat me up or, you know, uh, I don't know what to do. Well, just remember, just in the beginning, no one knows what to do. How can you expect yourself to know everything right off the bat? And yeah, just go off and go 100 miles an hour. That's not how it works. So you have to give yourself time. And I think that's where I'm going to finish off of this video is time. Don't expect yourself to just go in there and start manslaughtering down there and just going at it. You need to be patient and you need to give. And, and remember, this is a longevity sport. You don't want to go in there full guns a blazing and just trying to go on killer mode. This is a humbling experience. So that's one thing you need to remember when you're first starting this sport is you have to remember that this is a humbling experience. And with great power comes great responsibility. And that goes with your teammates and that goes with your coach and that goes with your wife and that goes with your kids. You know, you're learning something that's very deadly you have to remember that this is wrestling with submissions and the thousands of hundreds of thousands of people that I've submitted in my life. You have to know when to let go. You have to know when to be nice and you know how to, you know when to know when you need to go hard. And there's been a couple of times where I've had to push the limit a little bit and, you know, I've had injuries and I've given injuries and, you know, that's, that's part of this game is that, that that's going to happen. But the best thing to do that is being and having pre preventative maintenance. Um, so that whole ramble right there is for you guys to remember that this is something that if you want to do it for the, you know, uh, you know, for a long time, don't go guns a blazing, just have a good time and enjoy it. If you want to be a serious competitor and you want to go balls to the wall, go align yourself with those guys and they're there and do that too as well. So there's different, there's different there's different stages and places in the jujitsu community of where you want to be. And I'll give you an example because this is going to be a long, big rant video because, you know, if you're still with me, then keep going. But there's the competitors, right, that are there that are kind of borderline MMA. They're, they're, you'll see them over there doing the Muay Thai. You'll see them doing uh, boxing. And then they'll come over to jujitsu in their time. Okay, so a lot of competitors will be there. Then you've got the stoners, the, the, the chill 10th planet, you know, let's do some Baron Bolo into X guard back, back pass into like some sort of, I don't know, smoker I don't know, or vaporizer as they would call it. Just all sorts of names that you're going to have to remember too. 
Uh, you got those guys, right? They're just chill, flowing and rolling. Uh, you got your soccer mom, soccer dad, you know, that are there just trying to pick some stuff up and maybe coming once or twice a week. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's 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 really just those three. You got the competitors, you got the chill stone rollers, and then you got the <laughs> then you got the, like the mom and dad that are coming there once or twice a week. But for you guys to get the most out of it, three times is going to be preferred for you guys to retain that knowledge. But and also be open. You know, be open to something that's new to you, and accept what, um, yeah, what's about to happen. And uh, you know, don't be, uh, you know, don't be upset. Last thing I'll, I'll 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 say on this whole thing, I'll finish it up. Don't be afraid to be vocal about your struggles, um, your partners and your situations okay so um if you're having struggles learning something don't be afraid to ask out to the team you're paying 100 bucks 150 bucks a month whatever you're going there all you know all the time go ask your instructor hey i'm having a problem with this how can i help let's figure it out because we all have a lot of muscle memory that we need to uh, figure out and work around two is time um you know allow yourself some time to learn these new things and um, stay consistent at it and you will do well. There's there's no problem with that. Um, yeah, and 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 I th- you know have fun. This is this this is super fun. Uh, you're learning a sport that not a lot of people know. And uh, you know when you see someone else with a little little cauliflower ear, you know it, uh, it it's pretty cool. And it's kind of like joining a club, an exclusive club, or as we say, it's Fight Club. But we don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> um, but when you guys are uh, thinking about doing this, it, it, it's it's one of the coolest things to be a part of, and it's definitely like taking storm as you know karate did, like the Karate Kid did. Um, but this is actually something that works, which I don't think. Like, listen, I've done karate, taekwondo, jujitsu, judo, muay thai. Jujitsu is the best. It's it's one of my favorites. It's the most. Um, I can't I can't explain enough uh, as being a black belt, which I haven't even talked about but yeah um it's one of the most exhilarating euphoric experiences of my life and it's just somewhere where you can capsule your life into one moment at a time and you really aren't thinking about the outside world and that's why i say like you're trading one addiction for the other you're really um you're really putting yourself in a in a sphere where you're isolating yourself, your thoughts, your mind, your body, and there's really no outside frequency that's coming in other than yourself. And it's uh, that's why I say it's very addicting because you don't you are who you are and you are who you choose to be. And in that moment, you know, I get to choose that. And it's uh, again, it's it's very exhilarating. Um, and I highly recommend it. So yeah, um, again, if you guys have any questions or comments, please. Uh, uh, put them down below. I'd love to answer them. And then maybe we can do some more topics on that and, uh, you know, answer some questions with that. Good luck. And, uh, hopefully I'll see you on the mats.